Hello, you've arrived at the first episode of the Landscape Photography Show. This is an evolution of the Landscape Photography page and our friend, everyone's friend, Margaret Tompkins, who started that daily photography theme. And we have our global connection of photographers really from around the world. So what we're going to do on each episode is introduce ourselves or whoever the guests are and we'll be watching for your comments of people you'd like to see on here and then we'll be going forward with a theme of the day today we are going to talk about light and planning your photography shots from the light and I think it's going to be an amazing for anyone who's just getting started and wanting to improve their photography so we're going to start by introducing each of our guests here we'll start with Margaret Tompkins and I have to say thank you to Margaret and who am I? I my lower third isn't down there but I'm Cara Riley and I am a small business consultant and I am an amateur photographer and was encouraged by Margaret Tompkins in different daily photography themes to start improving and do better with my photography so I'm one of your first uh, mentees there Margaret that really has taken on and enjoyed this as a passion so Margaret Margaret's going to explain how she got into photography and then how the landscape photography page has evolved and what she does with her circles and how you can become part of this. So Margaret Tompkins from Kansas City. Hi Cara, uh, thanks uh, very much. Uh, you're really very kind uh, for that nice introduction. Um, our landscape photography page uh, started uh, several months ago. A number of us that were curating uh, some of the themes on Google Plus, uh, I kept falling in love with these uh, landscape photographs that I saw, uh, some from Europe. I've never been there, so to me these uh, photographs of Ireland were just stunning and um, I just fell in love with uh, just the landscape aspect of a lot of the themes that I was curating and got together with some others and thought well let's just start a little theme um, with uh, pretty pictures we'll look at pretty landscape pictures and not realizing that um, within a few months this would become one of the most popular photography themes on Google Plus so we've uh, added some wonderful curators and uh, you're going to get to meet some of our best ones here this evening I just love these people they help out so much and do so much uh, for the theme um, it's uh, easy to follow if you go to the landscape photography page all you have to do is click follow when you click follow then you can start sharing your landscapes uh, to the theme we post our best landscapes to the theme page so you have a real opportunity to have your photograph showcased in a very special manner uh, our landscape page is almost like a gallery uh, where we uh, really highlight the very best of landscape photography that's being done on Google Plus um, as for my story it goes back many Many years uh, I'm an old uh, film photographer and uh, used to go around uh, shooting everything and anything my first big purchase was a camera uh, my second big purchase was a house so you kind of get an idea as to the uh, priority that I gave to photography uh, I was out of it for many years as I was uh, uh, sort of uh, in the depths of a career and working very hard at that and uh, but I got back into it about 10 years ago um, first um, going and taking uh, shots of uh, figure skaters and kind of mastered that after a few years and uh, then really turning my attention to landscape photography so it's something that I dearly love and uh, really am so glad that all of you are a part of it 
and we really do want your input. So uh, we want this show and our theme to be responsive to what uh, our members and the theme really want. So we're asking for your feedback. Uh, we have uh, instituted a nice little feature, how to improve my photo. So you can get some critique on any photo that you post to the landscape photography theme. And we're looking for what other things that you might like to uh, share with us. So what guest would you like to see on this show? Let us know and we'll sure try to get them here. Uh, what features would you like to see us tackle? We'll try to get some guests that are experts in that area. So we really do want this show to be uh, about what you would like it to be. So we're interested in your feedback and I mean that most sincerely. All you have to do is post something to the theme and tell us what you would like to see. So that's kind of my story and I'm going to turn it back to Cara now. Thanks. Margaret, I'm, I'm so glad that you're on a camera here because you're so kind in your comments to everyone and now they're going to be able to see just exactly what a wonderful person you are. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the real me. <laughs> they can see the real you. We're, we get a little crazy in the green room, and and Ben might do some fun things to entertain you. So we we want it to to be family, the landscape photography family. <laughs> and we're going to go across the ocean now to talk with David Heath. Williams, who is one amazing photographer. He has a bridge in Dublin, <coughs> bridge, and it has, I think it's 15 million, million hits. So uh, he's going to talk to us today also about uh, how to get those early morning captures, but I want uh, David to uh, tell us just exactly how he got started and what he does, because we're introducing everyone first, and then we'll go to our presentation about light. So there you are, David, yeah. you're on. Hi, Cara, thanks very much, and listen, I'm amazing to be here today on the first Landscape Photography Show, and thanks very much to Margaret there, um, brilliant introduction as well. Um, my name is David Williams. Um, I'm from Wales, uh, which is part of the UK originally. Um, I lived there for 30 years, but 17 years ago I moved to Ireland, and I'm, I live there on the east coast, just south of Dublin, in a little uh, sleepy town called Bray, County Wicklow. Um, and it's just one idyllic place to live. It's great. Um, I go around taking pictures of Wicklow mostly, but try and get around Ireland as much as I can. Uh, and it's. I find Google Plus a great place to be. It's a great place to communicate with loads of people around the world, and that's how I got introduced to Margaret with the landscape photography theme. Um, and since then, we've built up a lovely team of people. And and, and what can you say? It's been brilliant. Uh, everyone around uh, supports the theme. And since then, since I joined, I found landscapes from literally every corner of the planet from the from the north to the south to east to the west in one way but just a big global uh, photographic theme and uh, I, I particularly thank you there to Margaret because um, she does dedicate a, a tremendous amount of time to all the the pluses the thank yous the how beautiful you photograph the colors everything you see um, and she does put an amazing amount of time in uh, and, and, and for me, that is uh, one massive positive thing. It just shows how wonderful Google Plus can be. Uh, and today now is the first show that we're all involved in. And I think this is going to go global, literally global. <laughs> and and, and uh, we have an amazing wow. event here with Cara Riley <laughs> and our, our band of merry men down there, Jim and uh, Ben. So let's make this uh, an amazing place to be. Wow. And let's treble our population, hopefully. Wonderful. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you, David. Um, and I want our listeners to know that David has gotten up at 2 a.m. in the morning. When you're trying to put on a global <laughs> show, it's a challenge with the time. So uh, we thank you, and we're looking forward to learning from all of the wonderful talent that you have to share. So now we're going to go back to the middle of the United States and we're going to meet with Jim 
Worthman and Jim. So tell us how you got started, and you have some amazing shots of Arizona. Well, thanks, Cara. And uh, I guess before I get into my background, I, I also want to very much thank Margaret uh, for pulling all of this together and being such a wonderful mentor to us all. Um, and also, Cara, for all the work you've done hosting the show. It's really exciting. Like David said, uh, the first landscape photography show, and uh, we all have high expectations for uh, a lot of interesting shows to come. So um, about me, um, by day I'm an engineer and project manager, but uh, my real passion is photography, especially landscape photography. I got seriously interested uh, in photography in high school, uh, doing black and white work in the wet dark room. Um, but after a number of years and, and doing mostly black and white and then some color work, you know, other things took precedence. I kind of moved away from photography for, for some time. Um, then about 2000, something really interesting happened, uh, for me at least. Canon introduced the D30, which was kind of the first affordable DSLR, and I jumped on board immediately. Um, had three whole megapixels, um, but but you know if you if you were careful, worked hard, uh, you could get really nice 12 by 18 prints. Um, but but you did have to be very careful in post processing. So that kind of set me on a path to you know learning the technical side. And uh, but throughout all of that, really renewed my passion for photography. Um, and I was lucky enough for the past 16 years to have lived in Arizona. So we're blessed to have access to a many really incredible landscapes, iconic places in the southwest like Antelope Canyons and the Wave, Monument Valley, and you know we could go on and on, but it's just a, a great place to be doing photography. Um, and, and during this same period, I've been active uh, both as a participant um, and a judge in local and state level camera clubs uh, as well as the Arizona State Fair. Um, so last September I, I really got active on Google Plus and, uh, and found this exceptional group of people uh, curating the landscape photography theme uh, and Margaret really was my first contact there and um, you know, it's it's been a, a wonderful experience. More recently, along with Margaret and David, uh, we've helped uh, Jay Patel set up the landscape photography community. So, uh, doing a lot of different landscape things. Uh, Google Plus has been a lot of fun, and and for me, it's a way to try to give back to the community. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, this is, uh, it really is interesting as we go across the country. And now I'm, go I'm so excited. Ben T is a fun guy. And I hope that you put some hats on and some horns on and some different things, Ben, when, when you're talking. Because he really is a creative, <laughs> exceptional um, photographer from the Seattle area. Area. And uh, so, Ben, take it away because we love your antics and we love your photography. Thanks very much for the nice introduction, Kara. Uh, thanks also to Margaret. Mm -hmm. I'm probably one of the newer uh, curators to the theme, but I enjoy spending uh, many hours sometimes uh, going through all of your wonderful landscape photos from around the world. You can find my photography right here on Google+. Plus. Just search for uh, Ben T. And if you're interested in more Puget Sound uh, photography, you can visit my photo blog at PugetExposure.com where I go around the area and I photograph interesting locations. So you don't have to read a travel book. You can just come to my website and I'll show you the best uh, locations around the area. And um, a little bit later, I'll be talking about this bag. 
<laughs> well, that's that's great, Ben. And you stay tuned because every single show we will have a theme, a daily theme, and our daily theme that we're going to start, or the theme that we're going to start with today is about light. Then we will have a, an important photography tip, which we'll get from Ben tonight, and also we will have one photographer to watch from each of the curators as we expand our circle in um, talking with people. So we'll get right into the program and each of us have a few slides to share or a few uh, photos to share exemplifying light and how we are using light and planning for light in, in your shots. So we're going to go back over across the ocean. We're going to start right back up here with uh, David as he gets up and is out there uh, literally in hours before the, the sun comes up and he gets that <laughs> first glimmer. So, so tell us how you do that and we're looking forward to seeing the screen share of your photographs because they are truly amazing. Um, well, I'm quite lucky in the fact in one way that I work nights, permanent nights, but on the other hand that's not so lucky because it can be very tiring sometimes and your sleep pattern's a bit awkward. But um, it also gives you an opportunity to um, take photographs at really awkward hours of the day, whether it be uh, pre-sunrise, blue hour, uh, sunrise time, golden hour. But um, for me, the sunrise will be uh, the time that I think I find the most uh, joy in the day. It's a, a brand new start, and, and, and if you set it up right for yourself for the day, you can have a brilliant day. Uh, I'm just going to go through a few screen shares then of uh, what I feel is what, what I love in photography and, and the light that I, that I take every morning. So this would be a, a typical time for me. Can you see my screen? We can, David. That's okay then. For me, this would be a typical time of day. Uh, this is about 45 minutes to an hour before sunrise. And uh, just searching for, the, for the, the light in the morning and the reflections that I, I can find. This would be Dublin Bay, looking towards Hoth Island. And uh, the, 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 the light I found here was uh, extraordinary that morning. And uh, I was lucky to be driving along the Sandy Mount Road and pop there it was I was driving along I could see it coming and coming and coming when I got there with the tide being out the reflections just made the, the shot really special for me and um, as much as I can I got a, a nice panoramic out of it the, this shot now is about 20 minutes quarter of an hour 20 minutes before sunrise it's looking along the the, the south wall in Dublin this uh, this structure on the right hand side here is a lighthouse on the very end. It's been there since about 1620, but 1820 was when the uh, first lighthouse was built there. But this is the same morning and the light was just coming through again as I got towards the pier. Uh, and I mean, what more could you wish for in the morning to see light like this? Um, in planning the day, doesn't you don't have to plan a day when you can drive out and just see something like this and, and go ahead and take the shot. So. Even though you should plan, plan ahead and see where you can. You can't judge for the weather most days, and especially in Ireland with the rain, the way it can be. So a beautiful sunrise like this is, is really what I strive to try and achieve. The next shot now, this is my local beach, uh, Bray, County Wicklow. And I suppose in one way, this is one, one shot that most people would see quite often. Um, this is a winter uh, sunrise just getting the light coming in, just sitting there waiting for the light. And the preparation of the shot is, is really just finding the place you want to stay, finding the shot you're looking for, seeing if the waves are working right, the reflection's right, and then taking the sun when it arrives. And again, this would be, you can see the light coming through. Just, just It was just awesome that morning. The pink clouds there, ah, it's, it's, it's what I like. The next shot now, this is Greystones, a bit further down from Bray. Um, this shot now, I love this shot in the morning because the, the way the waves hitting the rocks, um, clambering over to this spot is very awkward as well. Those rocks you see where those waves are coming through, you literally have to climb over those rocks. 
to get to this point because uh, they're all like narrow slits and there's no way down. Um, but again, just waiting for that light to come through, the perfect light in the morning, and uh, sitting there for about 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour sometimes. But if the clouds are right and you, you're in the right position, you'll get what you need. Now, this shot now is Collymore Harbour, uh, which is uh, again here on the island. This is uh, north of Bray, it's just south of Dublin, in County Dublin. Um, this morning now, this shot was made up of uh, six uh, edits in RAW, put into a, into one image in a PTG UI. But again, the the way the cloud and everything was in the morning, which are very lucky. It's like a fire in the sky. I'm just uh, very lucky with this that the light was exceptional that morning. Uh, How many mornings? This shot now, the last shot. I'm going to... Go on, Cara. Say that again. How many mornings a week do you go out to get those kind of shots? Because, you know, sometimes you'll go, go out with the light. No, no, Jim uh, went to the Grand Canyon and, and there was no good <laughs> light. So how many days a week do you go out to capture that beautiful light? Well, the part would be, I'll go back to that image there now. If, with this shot here, I just came out of work, looked up at the sky, my camera and equipment's in the car, so my camera is in the car with a tripod, and I said, okay, I'm heading off to Dorky. And I literally just drive off. If if the sun is shining seven days a week, I'll be out seven days a week. Um, and even if it's not shining, I'll get out there anyway. Um, but for me, the, the, the main task would be, like, when I walk out of work, I mean, right now the sun rises up at 8.30 in the morning, and I finish at seven, so I'll come home <clears throat> for half an hour. Um, the sky as I'm driving out of work, and I know virtually straight away. And now the sunrise is coming back towards the seven o'clock point, so it's moving and moving at a couple of minutes every morning. So I have more and more time. But if if it's if it's shining, I'll be out. If it's not shining, there are some mornings where I might w walk out of work and go, I want to go to bed. Yeah. So I'll well, go home straight away. Thanks for thanks for explaining I mean, that, David. Yeah, it's just that when I when I get home, um, sometimes it's just I want to go to sleep, or I have to take the children to school anyway. So fifteen and seventeen only would be able to walk, I suppose, but um, okay. I take them to school. All right. Just well, on. Thank you. Go on. Okay, there. Right, oh, that's a beautiful one too. Tell us about this one. <clears throat> oh, this this just the last one there is the um, <clears throat> this is uh, Dunbar Head in County Wicklow. This is just after sunrise, about fifteen minutes after sunrise, <clears throat> and the uh, the cloud is extraordinary that morning. There's a herringbone effect on one side, and it was all wispy on the other side, and the light just catching the lighthouse. This is another uh, six image. Um, uh, pano shot put together um, to clamber down to this point it was a bit awkward it looks um, like you just hop over the wall but it isn't that easy um, but again you're about 200 feet above the water as well clambering to some rocks but the, the clouds that, mo that morning in the sky were amazing but yeah it's just, uh, it's just capturing the light early morning light is what I like to see well, that is wonderful, David. Thank you for sharing those um, sharing those thoughts. Uh, and I think that what I took away from this, as you know, an aspiring young new well, <laughs> young, but <laughs> anyway, a a new amateur photographer is the whole planning of it, and and the timing, and where you were talking about where the sun would be um, at a particular time. So I think those are all important. Uh, facts yeah. and concepts for people to grasp. So now we're going to go to a little li later in the morning with Jim and Jim is going to talk about capturing uh, the sunrise um, in the southwest instead yep. of the ocean. <laughs> Thanks Cara. Yeah and and uh, I'm going to talk about the golden hour. Um, unlike what we just saw from David, you won't see a lot of water in my shots of Arizona. <laughs> we actually do have some water. What are you water, trying to say, Jim? Uh, I, I 
every morning when I get up, I like looking at your stream to see what your latest <laughs> sunrise shot over the ocean is going to be because it's gorgeous and uh, I don't get to see water otherwise. Um, so, yeah, golden hour, uh, and some people call it the magic hour. And what that refers to is, you know, the beautiful warm light we see either just after sunrise or just before sunset. Um, but, you know, it's warm light, but uh, it, it has a real special quality besides just being warm in hue. And that is, uh, during the golden hour, the light's generally softer, um, more diffuse. Um, it doesn't produce really dark shadows as a rule, so it's lower contrast light. Um, and and you'll see that here in a minute, some examples, and you've probably seen lots yourself already. Um, but, you know, we call it the golden hour, but actually how long it lasts really depends on where you are. So, you know, in the Arctic or the Antarctic, the, the land of the midnight sun, um, the golden hour at certain times of the year can really be 24 hours long. Um, in Iceland, another example, you know, the golden hour can last four or five hours. Um, in Arizona, it might last five or ten minutes. So it really depends on, on the geometry and what the sun's doing where you are. Um, so let me show you an example. I'm going to show um, six, uh, a, a, a ser series of photos um, that shows about six or eight minutes of really great light. <coughs> and then I'll show you a little bit before and after uh, that light. These were taken in northern Arizona a place called White Mesa Arch. Um, it's on the Navajo Reservation. Um, it's quite a long uh, drive to get there um, and need From a, Phoenix. Uh, from, from Phoenix. Well, from, <laughs> even from Tuba City, you know. So it's like get up early at the hotel and, and plan on a, on a long commute to get there. You need a Navajo guide because uh, it's on the reservation. Um, after you park, there's a, a bit of a hike over Slick Rock in the dark. So... Yeah, it's an interesting place to get to. Um, and let me go ahead and share my screen, okay? Um, so, uh, oh, one other comment. Also, these shots are, are straight out of the camera as witnessed if you look closely by the dust blobs. So these are, these are basically unprocessed photos that you're going to see. Um, and uh, so the first one we'll start is, is about 7.28 in the morning. That's based on the EXIF data. Um, and uh, this was uh, in one December. Uh, and so uh, December, the sun, of course, rises much later. But 7.28, it's pre-dawn light. There's, there's really no golden hour in evidence at all. Um, moving to the next shot, uh, just a, a few minutes later, um, you're starting to see a touch of light at the top of the arch. Some people would call this alpenglow, um, and, but uh, you can see that it's, it's getting to be time to set your final composition for when you really start getting the light. A um, couple minutes later, and and the sun is up, and and the gold light is happening, and so. You know, this this is the time where a lot of people are, are just clicking away, myself included. However, uh, it wasn't until a couple minutes later when the light peaked. So you can see during the golden hour, there's this progression. Um, the It's just beautiful warm light, but if you look at the shadows on the ground in the foreground, you can see they're not really deep, dark shadows. So again, they're, they're, it's kind of a soft, low contrast light. Um, so this, this was really the peak that day. Um, four minutes later, the light is starting to fade. And, you know, it's still nice, and those are certainly usable shots. Um, and, of course, this is unprocessed, but if, if, you, if you really wanted to, uh, you, you could you know, tweak up the saturation or, or adjust the color balance a little, whatever. I tend to not like to do too much of that. But the point, though, is that in just a few minutes, you know, the light's starting to fade. And just a few minutes later, and for all intents and purposes, um, the, the golden hour is over. 
So, you know, this one didn't last all that long. Um, and the, the shadows are starting to darken. Obviously, the warm light is, is really dissipated. Um, and, uh, and so a lot of people would tend to just pack up and go home. But when you take that much time and effort to get to a place, yeah, I kind of like to spend time and, and either take some detailed shots or just goof around. And, and uh, you know, here's an, an example of, of uh, you know, a shot basically an hour after that nice golden light. Uh, um, pleased to say Arizona Highways selected this as the best Arizona <clears throat> landscape uh, a few years back in a competition they held. But uh, that's, that's just kind of one of the things that happened after the golden hour that day. So that's it, Kara. Oh. Jim, thank you for sharing that. It was really um, very... Um, technical from showing the, the, how the light comes and how it transfers. So, and you were so right about how long it lasts because the the shots that I'm going to be sharing were from um, Air, uh, Hawaii um, just this past December, and I'm sharing the sunset. And so, where we are here, this sunset. It can is only going to last probably less than five minutes, maybe three to five minutes. And here's where the the glow is starting to um, go, um, come there. And then you can see where the sun is starting to drop down, and this sky has some clouds in it. So um, this was the. The tripod was the um, railing on my uh, condo <laughs> balcony, okay, so to get it to where, where it was. And you could just see the, the um, sky changing so fast. And there it is dropping, and you're seeing that whole golden glow all the way through there. Then we go a little bit, and you see it start to go away, just like you said. It, it changes. Now it's becoming softer, and um, the reds are starting to come through. And then we come right here to where really that glow is gone, and, and all we've got is the little bit of um, rose color on, on the clouds. So then the next night, because um, I knew what was going to happen, this is when I got the shot with none of the clouds in there, and there's the sun, and, and right through um, those palm trees going down a little bit closer. <laughs> so it was really spending several nights watching the sunset, seeing how it was going to work, and playing around with where um, I definitely wanted the um, camera to be focused um, uh, when, when I had an opportunity for the next sunset. And one of the nice things about Hawaii is you're going to get a good one just about every night. <laughs> so so that, was, uh, that was a lot of fun. And uh, it's, it's just interesting as you start when you're new um, thinking about these things. And, and really planning about it and we went out to uh, dinner uh, with a friend and they had a whole balcony and he's like okay you guys gotta stop what you're doing because the sunset's gonna be gone and everybody did they just walked to the balcony and watched it because it was gone in five minutes so so that was that uh, evening golden hour and thanks for sharing Jim how fast it can change in different places that you, you are so now here we're going to go to the blue hour with Ben and uh, some more sunset stuff. All right, thanks. So we got to see the start of the day with David and the middle of the day, and I'm going to show you some light changes happening uh, during sunset. Now I'm up here in the Pacific Northwest, so... Um, I have a mountain range between myself and the actual horizon, so we'll talk about some of the issues when it comes to planning for sunset with a mountain range nearby. Is my window showing up? Yay! 
Yeah, it was. Now it's gone. You go back to your screen share. Oh, okay. We, we saw the beautiful, uh, the beautiful wave with the reflection in the sand. Yes. Can you guess where that is, Kara? I think it's that same beach. <laughs> this is uh well this That's is not Lanai behind This is there. not the Seattle area. This is uh cuz Kara was just recently in Hawaii. This is uh south of Kihei on Hawaii. Excellent. Beautiful. There's that sun, that same sun. <laughs> <laughs> So in this next image here, this is up in Hurricane Ridge. Uh, this is over near the uh, Olympic National Forest, home to one of the only rainforests uh, in North America. And uh, so I just I headed up here in the springtime so I could capture uh, the wildflowers in bloom. So that's another thing you want to keep track of is what season you plan on uh, heading out because as um, – you know, flowers come and go, your your foreground is also going to be changing. Uh, this was taken uh, this past summer. We're looking west towards the Olympic Mountain Range, and we had a 16,000-acre uh, forest fire happening at this point in time. So that's why we get all this uh, red glow. It looks nice, but it's uh, not a good time for any... Uh, wildlife that happened that's uh, where their habitat is is burning um, another compositional shot is you can look for silhouettes this is uh, one of my marinas up here this is the Everett marina so if you don't always if you can't always see the horizon and you can't see the sun go down you can still find interesting elements to use the setting colors as a, a backdrop uh, this one I just took over the weekend. This is a little beach uh, nearby. <coughs> and here you can see uh, the transition from gold to blue. Uh, this is about 40 minutes before actual sunset. And we're losing a lot of light here because of the marine layer. And there's uh, a 10,000 foot mountain range, which we're looking at too. So even though you're... Weatherman says, you know, sunset is going to happen at quarter of six. Depending on where you are, uh, you can lose light an hour before sunset. So, um, you know, location spotting is always helpful to know what the real uh, sunset time will be because you don't want to leave your house uh, 10 minutes before sunset and think you can get <clears throat> good light. And this one is probably another 15 minutes after that. Now we're going into the purples and the bluish tones of the sky. And this one is a uh, shot from West Seattle. We're looking back at downtown Seattle with our Ferris wheel. Uh, this is more around the blue hour time. Now we're not looking into the sun, we're looking east. So after the sun has set and you get these blue tones, if you look <laughs> off to the east, this is where you're going to get that uh, nice metallic glow. So if you're near a city like Chicago or New York with a lot of skyscrapers with a lot of glass, you'll get a lot of nice reflections in the window. And this is uh, obviously the, the Space Needle this past summer. They've repainted it twice. It was painted orange for the uh, 50th anniversary, and then they painted it green for uh, the Seahawks. <laughs> but uh, that didn't help. <laughs> well, the orange didn't help us either. <laughs> yeah. And those are my uh, shots. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ben. The beautiful. We've seen the very beginning of the day. We've seen the end of the day. And now Margaret is going to transition us into taking those beautiful shots throughout the day. So, Margaret, take, it, take us throughout the day. Thanks. Um, traditionally, you always hear of the golden hour and the blue hour. Um, so you're shooting at sunrise and you're shooting at sunset and we've just seen some gorgeous, gorgeous pictures of um, that type of light. But I'll share with you uh, a few tips for taking shots during the day. Let's see if I can get this.
Do you see that one? We do. You're, okay. you're up there. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, this is the Slot Canyons near Page, Arizona. And this was shot at like 10 o'clock in the morning. And at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning in Arizona, even the lizards are looking for shade. Uh, so it's just very hot. Uh, uh, the, all the light is just blown out. Uh, but this is the time when you want to be in the slot canyons. Um, that's when you get those beautiful shafts of light if you have someone who will cooperate and throw some sand up in the air. Uh, so what you're really seeing is the light reflecting uh, fracting off of the sand that's in the air and you see those wonderful shafts of light. But the light, the slot canyons are so narrow that the light only penetrates to the floor of the canyon at certain times of the day and it doesn't last very long, maybe about a half hour, 45 minutes. So you need to be there uh, at the particular time and I've had any number of people uh, comment on some of our images uh, that they went to the slot canyons and they didn't see any shafts of light. Um, but the thing is they went maybe in the afternoon and I went at 10 o'clock in the morning at least in August and was able to capture this one. So sometimes being in the proper location it really pays you to be there during the day rather than just at sunrise or at sunset. Now here's another shot. Uh, this is a cloudy overcast day and when you have that kind of light, grab your camera and go out and start shooting. You just get some wonderful photographs when it's uh, cloudy and overcast. Uh, this had been just a little bit after a rain. You can see that there's still some moisture in the cracks along the asphalt path and that just leads uh, to the additional texture that you see there. You've got the uh, beautiful uh, cedars of Missouri with the rich dark greens colors and of course this was fall foliage uh, sort of at its best. So an overcast uh, cloudy day sometimes you can get some magnificent landscape photographs. And when it's really bright and sunny out head for the shade. Find some shade and you may get lucky and find some marvelous critters that are also in the shade enjoying it and you get some wonderful uh, photographs there uh, uh, in the shade. Now this was an extremely bright day. Uh, this was at a botanical gardens that covers about uh, 50 acres. Uh, beautiful area near where I live. Uh, but they open at 8 o'clock in the morning and they close at about 6 in the evening. So there's no time there to capture sunrise or sunset and this was like I said a bright sunny day so the only option I had was to head for the shade but often you can get some wonderful shots there. And another thing you might try, now this is a fairly bright sun that you see here and you can tell that by the dark shadows. Um, they're, they're not the soft shadows that you saw in Jim's photograph. These are rather stark. But what you can do is change your subject matter. Uh, here you have something that has lots of color to it and lots of texture and your eye is drawn to that like some of these leaves around in here. Your eye really is drawn to those areas. Now this is a photograph that's pretty much straight out of the camera. It hasn't been processed and probably uh, I would be cropping this maybe to focus upon this area. Uh, where you don't have such of the intense shadows and I'd get rid of the ragged leaf down here, that sort of thing. Maybe a vertical cropping over here. Again, places where the shadows aren't quite as stark and the contrast isn't as deep. But this is often a trick that you can do uh, to still get nice photographs even when the sun is out. Um, to look for something with lots of color in it and lots of texture because the eye is really drawn to that. So those are just a few ideas that um, uh, you might try when it's during the middle of the day. And we'll see if I can... Well that's awesome. 
Thank, thank you so much for sharing those those tips. Follow the shade in the middle of the day. Yeah. That's a that's a great idea. And uh, now, I, just as a, a side note, in the Slot Canyons, um, when we were there in September, that light was only there about five minutes, and you ha you had much more time. So uh, one of our shows we will we'll be talking about different apps. <laughs> that you can use on your smartphone to know uh, when that sunrise is, when, when that sunset is, but again we've talked about how you've got to take your own uh, uh, destiny in your own hands, but at least you have a guideline. Yeah. So now we're, we've, <laughs> we've come to this part of the show where each one of the landscape uh, photography curators are going to share one photographer that they think that is up and coming, someone you should would love to circle and would enhance uh, your stream. So we're just do, each doing one. We'll start with Margaret and then we'll get to our tip of the day. So uh, here we go. Um, this is a feature that we hope that we can um, do each episode uh, to alert you to a photographer that uh, you may not know about. And uh, my uh, pick for this uh, show is um, Steve Gould. Now, Steve is a uh, fairly new to Google Plus, and he's one of our newest uh, landscape photography theme curators. He's out of the uh, San Diego area and is a professional photographer there. He just had a show last month, and uh, he did beautifully well at that show, um, and uh, sold lots of prints and his books, and uh, did very well. He had to work very hard uh, to keep reframing more more material there but he's an excellent photographer I do hope you check him out he's uh, frequently posts to the landscape photography theme and he's one that if you're not familiar with Steve Gould you're absolutely going to fall in love with his beautiful work so that's my pick for the day is Steve Gould great now we'll just jump right over here to uh, David who is your photographer to watch um, a, a guy I like very much is uh, James Slevin. Um, he's not necessarily a landscape photographer, but that's what he does. Um, he takes uh, continuously black and white pictures. Um, but James Slevin from County Clare in Ireland. Um, I could pick anyone from around the world. I don't know why I picked someone from Ireland, but it, for me now, that would be just one. He, he takes some amazing uh uh, portraits, some amazing uh, group shots, but also when he gets out and he get, he takes his camera out to do landscapes, he finds things that I love and uh, I like to see, and that, that's who I'd recommend. I think the guy is, uh, is great. I mean, I, I, I chat to him occasionally, not very often, um, but uh, when we do chat, we know each other quite well. But uh, it's not just a, a personal recommendation, it's someone I, I actually do love his photography. Uh, and he's creative as well. He doesn't just sit there and take a picture. Um, he makes his wife stand in a Marianne stand in a, an awkward spot or a weird spot or make a, 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 some sort of theme out of a movie. He's, he, he's an extraordinary guy, and uh, I do love his work. So I hope that's who I'd recommend, James Slevin. Uh, thank you, thank you, David. Sounds like a fun guy to uh, to watch uh, his photography. And just so all of you listeners will know, um, we will have links to the photographers to watch um, under the uh, link to this show. So you'll be able to watch this show anytime and then see the, the names of the photographers to be able to circle. So the person I would like to share with you today is um, someone from Los Angeles. Her name is Robin Cohen and she's a psychotherapist, psychoanalyst, and a hypnotherapist who takes her photography and blends it with art and so she's really seen the world through a lot of fun lenses so if you're not if you don't have Robin circled you should because she has some very beautiful shots and now we're gonna go to Jim yeah so my recommendation today is California based photographer Michael Ryan R-Y-A-N um, he's uh, rather new to Google+, doesn't have a lot of followers yet, 
Um, and most everything he posts is a landscape photo. He does both color and black and white. Um, I hope you'll look through his posts, and, and I think you'll agree his, his photos are just spectacular. Uh, recently, he was awarded the landscape photo of the day in the landscape photography community. So I, I'd encourage you to take a look at his work, and I think you'll like it. Circle him and uh, maybe comment on some of his latest images. Great, thank you. Now, Jim, you're up. <laughs> or Ben, Ben, you're up. <laughs> Three letters, E E N. It's your turn. <laughs> All right, my photographer is Scott Rinkenberger. He's, uh, at least, I think he's still local uh, to the Seattle area. And we as landscape photographers need clothing to go out in the elements so if you're going out and about chances are you walked into an REI clothing store they're uh, outfitters they sell jackets and everything and crampons and climbing tools well he used to work with Chase Jarvis so he would do all the promotion for REI <laughs> And you can find him here on Google Plus, uh, Scott Rinkenberger, or you can also check his website at Scott Rink, S C O T T R I N C K. And he's uh, an adventure photographer. I believe he was a pro skier prior to picking up a camera. But you can see some of his uh, athletic work here. A lot of mountains. Uh, he just had a show. He f photographed 12 months of skiing in Washington State, and he just published that, and I believe they had a, a screening for that. So if you like uh, adventure photography and Alpine-style photography, go ahead and circle Scott Rinkenberger. Wow, that, that's a nice, diverse um, circle of people that we've started here. So we're going to be ending up, but before we end up, before we end up with our special tip, I would like to ask all of our listeners to give us some comments of what you'd like to see more of, what you would like to see as far as content. And we're telling you that next week will be, or the 29th, at the same time, we will be sharing how to plan. We talked about the light, so then it's like specifically how to plan for a shot. But we would like feedback on this show. If there's anything that you would like to see incorporated or changed, this was our first episode, and we really appreciate you hanging in there with us. And uh, your feedback will help make us better. So we, we're hoping to, to get some good feedback from you. And now, as the best uh, for last, we're going to always have some kind of a photography tip. So this is going to be a green, economical photography tip, and Ben T is going to share um, how, how you can use this special tip. All right. Well, we all know photography is very expensive, so we need to save some money here and there. So uh, in my intro, I held up this plastic bag. And now we'll go into talking about how you can make your own. Basically, this is a do-it-yourself uh, rain cover for your camera body, because not every camera body is uh, weather sealed. So if you go to pgexposure.com and click on the tutorials, you'll find uh, more or less like a step-by-step -step on how I created this bag. And basically it starts out as a two and a half gallon Ziploc bag, uh, some duct tape, and I taped off uh, about a five inch square on the bag. This is to reinforce the bag as you cut it, because what we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole in it so that we can stick our lens through it. And you keep the opening of the bag on the bottom so that you can, uh, you can see my tripod here. So I still have complete access from the bottom to the tripod so I can tilt the camera, get to my settings, uh, use a cable release or whatever. And here's a profile shot. So uh, this bag, you know, it's inexpensive, takes you less than 10 minutes to make. 
and you can use this when you're on the beach and it's windy and you don't want any sand in your lenses or in your camera or if you get caught in a slight drizzle uh, this is also very helpful to save your gear hey Ben yeah I think this would be an outstanding thing to take into the slot cans in canyons if somebody around you is throwing dust in the air. Yeah, yeah dust, <laughs> sand, um, you know, a slight <laughs> snowfall. I mean, this is not 100% waterproofing your camera, so, you know, it comes with certain limitations. But because it folds down so quickly, it's so easily deployable, and everybody has, you know, plastic bags around. I mean, uh if you run out of your, if you eat all, if you eat through your granola, you can eat, turn your granola bag into your rain cover if you need to. <laughs> well, Ben, thank you very much. And I'll tell you, when we were uh, chatting one time on a, on a practice hangout, Ben had shared this tip. And when I was in Hawaii, it started to pour. And I'm like, oh, man, I need to get these shots. And I, in my purse was the bag that you put all of your liquid things in to go on the airplane. And I whipped out my bag, and I thought of Ben. And I'm like, thank you, Ben, for helping me uh, be green and save my camera from the water. And every week, we will have a fun tip. I know what's coming up next week, and you'll want to hear Jim Worthman has a great uh, share for us on that. And again, it's the 29th of January at the same time, same station, Landscape Photography Show, and we will see you at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Margaret's time is 8 and 2 a.m. for uh, for David, and we, we really would sincerely appreciate any comments, any people that you would like to see on here, any topics, and next week we'll be planning our shots. And thank you for staying with us for the inaugural show, Episode 1, Landscape Photography. So take some great shots, and we'll see you on the 29th.